Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Gina Solis, and I'm the Director of Financial Aid. Um, wishing you a very warm welcome to the visitor program. Uh, we think these are good opportunities for you to learn a lot about the school, get a sense of what it's like here, and then certainly get some information. Um, I think that financial aid might be a little bit of a boring topic or a frightening topic, so I'll try to make it a little bit more um, understandable and relaxed and sort of uh, answer any questions uh, that might come up. So. Basically, I always like to start these programs off by giving you a little exercise to think about. You're making a big financial decision. This is a big investment in your time, a big investment in your money. So I want you to think really hard about your money. And this exercise that I have is um, sort of a fun weekend exercise that you can do someday. What I want you to do is I want you to go to the ATM. And this is the only time you'll ever hear the financial aid office telling you it's okay to withdraw money out of the ATM. I'm not telling you to spend it necessarily, but you can withdraw it. And for the people that are admitted students that are currently working, um, you're, you get the big bonus withdrawal. You get to withdraw $40 out of the ATM. For those of you that are still students, you're living on a tighter budget, so you only get to withdraw $20. I'm sorry about that. And then what I want you to do is I want you to take all of your credit cards, all of your plastic, even that ATM card, take all of that out of your wallet, put all of that plastic in a metal bowl, fill the metal bowl with water, and then put that metal bowl in the freezer you are literally putting your credit on ice. It's frozen, you don't have access to it, all you have is that 20 or that $40 in your wallet. And then think about the different financial decisions that you're making. If you have a group of friends that are going out to a fancy restaurant, well, maybe that's not an option for you anymore. Or if you say, gosh, instead of doing that, let's have movie night at my house, and by the way, you bring the food and the drinks. So basically, it's just a sort of a silly little exercise Really, when you literally have a limited amount of resources in your wallet, what kind of different decisions do you make? And that's essentially what law school is. Um, we set a cost of attendance, we have a budget, we think it's a reasonable <coughs> amount for the living expenses, the cost of living in central New York, but we really want you to think long and hard about the money that you're borrowing. I'm going to tell you some details about loans in just a moment. And just think about having limited resources and making different decisions. Um, there's this old saying, live like a student while you're a student, so you can live like a lawyer while you're a lawyer. So that definitely applies to you as you think about the student loans that you'll be repaying. So my little quiz, why did I choose a metal bowl for this exercise? Why is your credit on ice in a metal bowl in the freezer? You can't put metal in the microwave. So if you're dying to go out to the mall or go out with your friends, you have to wait for that to defrost. It's going to sit on the counter and you can't put it in the microwave to melt it faster. So that's just my little exercise. So the next time you go to the ATM or go out or say yes to an invitation from friends and family, maybe you can think about that little exercise and maybe make some different decisions. Um, before you come to law school, uh, we want you to think about um, not making any big purchases, searching for outside scholarships, just really thinking about your finances. Um, we actually have a new section on our website called Orange U Savvy. Isn't that a cute little name? Um, so Orange U Savvy is a financial literacy site for law students. Um, it's not password protected, so you can go out and look at that. Um, you can also link to our outside scholarship section of our website. So um, once you've uh, exhausted the resources, the grants or the scholarships that we're able to offer you here, um, go out and search. There could be a bar association or a community group, another place that might have a little bit of uh, money, maybe a writing competition, or maybe it's just you find something that you're the perfect candidate because it's your hometown or it's for someone who's planning to practice the type of law that you think you're interested in. So definitely seek outside scholarships. But the next part of this, um, a lot of you have applied for financial aid, a lot of you have heard from us. So once you know what your grants and scholarships are, the next part of this is loans. So I want to talk to you just very briefly about the student loan program. There are two types of federal direct loans, and we think that the federal loans are a little bit better of a deal than private loans simply because there's some really good repayment terms and some options that aren't available in the private loan program for borrowers of the federal loans. 
So the two types of loans, federal direct unsubsidized loan. Unsubsidized means the government is not paying the interest for you while you're in school. So interest is accruing. It has a 6.8% interest rate and it has a cap of $20,500. So the government sets the limit. If you file a FAFSA, we'll tell you what your eligibility is. It will be $20,500. The other type of loan is basically there to fill the gap. So if you know what our cost of attendance is and you subtract out what your grant is and what your uh, unsubsidized loan is, the remainder can be filled, unless you have like rich Aunt Sally who's going to be helping you, um, the rest of it can be filled with the Federal Direct Graduate Plus Loan. Now the Graduate Plus Loan is a credit-based loan, so when you apply for it, there is going to be a credit authorization that happens. So that's a little bit different from the unsubsidized loan. Grad Plus, um, when you apply for it, you choose the amount that you want to borrow. So unlike the cap of the unsubsidized loan, every person has a different maximum eligibility, the school's cost of attendance minus your other financial aid. It has a fixed 7.9% interest rate, and it's also unsubsidized. So that means, again, interest is accruing while you're in school. Now, you're not required to make payments on either of those loans while you're in school, but if you're able to afford to do that, then you know, that will cost you less in the long run because once you go into repayment, hopefully that's upon graduation, um, you'll be sort of starting out at that principal, that original amount that you've borrowed if you can not afford to make interest payments. And you can change your mind as you go along. So if you want to give it a shot, and then clearly as you go through law school, the more years you have under your belt, the more you'll be borrowing, the more your quarterly interest payment will be. So if it gets to be an unmanageable amount, you can work with your servicer and make a different decision. Um, so I have a little cheat sheet, a little piece of paper here, because I want to put this into real numbers for you. $20,500, unsubsidized loan. If you're here for three years, you'll borrow $61,500 if you take advantage of that maximum every year. Standard repayment is 10 years. If you put that into a repayment calculator, $61,500, 6.8% interest rate, 10 years. The repayment amount every month will be $700 a month, just about I rounded it. You're also borrowing Graduate PLUS loan, potentially. So I put a figure out there. Um, imagine if you borrowed $20,000 a year, three years, $60,000 total, standard repayment 10 years, fixed 7.9% interest rate. Put that into the repayment calculator, $725 a month. And you need to add those two things together. So now you're over $1,400 a month, and that seems scary. And even if the dean were still here in the audience, I would still give you these numbers and then hope that you don't go running out the door because there's no reason to go running out the door because first of all, I know what you're going to do first off. You're going to think about your cost of attendance. You're going to um, think about your resources. You're going to borrow and live like a student. So you'll keep that debt down so maybe you won't have to borrow this much. But the second thing that you can do is you can take advantage of other repayment options. So for example, there's an extended repayment. So instead of just a 10-year term, you repay over 25 years. That's going to reduce the monthly amount that you owe. Clearly, if you take any debt and you repay it over a longer period of time, you'll pay more over the life of the loan, but there's no penalty for early payment. So again, 25-year payment, same dollar amounts, $400 a month for the unsubsidized loan, $450 roughly for the Grad Plus. So that takes that $1,400 a month payment and at least it brings it down closer to $850. So that's good news. The other good news is there's income-driven plans. So instead of just based on what you borrow, it's instead it will be based on your family size and your household income. And so there's a calculation that takes place to say, we want to make sure all of you get to choose the law school that you want to attend, borrow what you need to to get by to pay the tuition bill, to have reasonable expenses for your personal expenses covered by these student loans if you need to go that route, and then take the job that you want to take. So income-based repayment or pay as you earn, those plans are available. And again, based on your household income, I gave two examples on my slip of paper here. Imagine if you were earning $40,000, which I know doesn't sound like very much, but there very well could be some nonprofits or maybe even some government positions out there that that's the salary range. Um, the repayment amount goes down to $291 a month. So that's a far cry from the $1,400 a month that I talked in the first example. So again, income-based repayment, pay as you earn, make something more manageable based on your situation, what you're earning, what you're doing. 
Student loans are scary. We want to diffuse that scariness and answer your questions. We don't want you to wait until your third year to come in and have a one-on-one -on -one appointment with us where we go over what all of the repayment plans are. These are just average figures or generic figures that I've picked out of my hat. We want you to pay attention to what you borrow annually and then come and meet with us and we'll put those into repayment calculators with you so that you're not afraid at the end of your legal career. So very, very quickly, this is the time, uh, once you make your decision, your final decision on where to attend, this is the time of the year to fill out promissory notes. Even though you've already filed the FAFSA and we might have told you what your eligibility is, the next step is to actually say, yes, I want to borrow this loan. So you have a financial aid to-do list on MySlice and you'll be directed to the Federal Direct website called studentloans.gov. On that website, you can apply for the loans um, for first-time Grad Plus borrowers. There's also entrance counseling, so it's sort of a little online quiz where we want you to read about your rights and responsibilities as a student loan borrower. Then the next thing that's going to happen in June is anyone that has matriculated, our Bursar's office, which is our billing office, will send out billing statements for the fall. And you'll see any financial aid, including those student loans that you've applied for, as anticipated credit on that bill. And so there's a potential that if you have all of your aid in order, that you won't owe anything more when that bill comes due in July. And then come August, right around orientation, just before school begins, we'll disperse all of your financial aid. So grants, scholarship, loans will be dispersed or credited to that bill. And then if you've borrowed to help pay not only for your billable expenses like tuition and fees, if you've also borrowed to help pay for your living expenses, that credit balance will be available to you. So you'll basically get a refund from the bursar, and then you'll need to stretch that out for the fall semester, make that last budget for yourself. And then the same thing happens again in January. So when the spring bill is due and the aid credits, you'll get a refund again in the spring semester for your, your living expenses. Did I even take a breath that whole time? As I said, in a nutshell, what's happening? Um, I have time maybe for two or three questions. Um, like I said, the dean cut into my time just a little bit. So um, may help answer any questions right now. Yes? Um, you said on the um, unsubsidized federal loans, there's a cap on the interest. No, there's a cap on the amount that you can um, borrow. Um, so Right, so 20500 is the max that someone can borrow. I've either bored you or scared you or um, not sure what other acronyms or words I could use. All right, well, so we have this session planned out hand in hand. So where I talk about uh, money and borrowing and possibly even income-based repayment, um, our next speaker is uh, Kim Wolf Price, who talks about um, jobs, which is, I guess, your ultimate goal for going to law school. I think so. <laughs> um, so I should also just mention um, uh, before Kim speaks is that if you do have any personal questions one on one that wouldn't have been appropriate to ask in the crowd um, at the end of the day today, we do have uh, time that you're invited to come to the financial aid office. Oh, and I forgot to introduce Shelly and Emily. I'm so sorry. So um, I brought with me today, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, Emily Massenio is our financial aid coordinator. When you come into the office, she's there. Um, she's the one that's been helping. Um, track your documents and if you have questions about what's on the financial aid to-do list, Emily's the person that has been helping you with that. Um, Shelly Lee is our assistant director and um, she's really a great loan repayment expert and meets regularly with students. Um, and instead of needing a Kleenex box, sometimes I hear people laughing when they're in Shelly's office, so that's a good thing. All right, so thank you so much for your time. I'll turn the program over.